pretty straightforward, fun daily today as we're looking at two games between Huck and Sting. Uh, game one, I really loved Huck's fourth base positioning, and as a result, where his army clearly had to be positioned in order to defend it, which interestingly caused these huge problems for Terran, and we just saw the Terran rapidly fall apart. Let's follow it up in this game, where we see Huck doing, I think, something that has plagued him for a while, which is being a little bit too over-eager with basic gateway units. I mean, certainly there is a time and place to do that, but I think that given the opportunity, going for a longer term move is generally going to be, um, have a lot less variance than going for these gateway pushes if you, you know, sense vulnerability. Moving right along. So, in this position, um,. Huck's doing something that I genuinely don't have a lot of experience with. Uh, both from an analysis and especially from a playing standpoint. I almost never go for Dark Shrine, but Huck goes Dark Shrine a lot. Like a lot, 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 lot. Um, but still, there's not a lot that changes when this sort of thing happens. So this play, going for Twilight with Charge is normal. Going uh, and pairing it with armor is very normal. All very strong. This helps us deal with the stim. This helps us deal with the units that fire that are stimmed. <laughs> Basically this is keeping our zealots alive. Um, if you have guardian shield and plus one armor, it takes a hundred shots for a marine just to kill the life of a zealot, not the shields. So that's really good. And also lots of gateways. This is just a really common look that we see in this matchup. And then, of course, transitioning into Zealot Archon. But this is kind of a funky add end to it. This, the concern that I would have with this is that we would be burning our gas that we would want to be spending on sentries and archons. However, I think given that we have some stalkers to be able to deflect stuff up on high, and we have killed off a good amount of stuff, I mean... This is not insignificant, these units that have been killed off. This is nine marines. People seem to be confused about the math. I'll go through it. Marines do... Um, I'll even point. Marines do six base damage. I know they have plus one, but they do six base damage. Six base damage minus the two armor that the Zealot has is four. Minus the two from the Guardian Shield is two. So, 100 life is what a Zealot has, 100 divided by 2 is 50 shots. A confident from day 9. But yeah, this I think, um, this I'm generally fine with, so long as two conditions are met. One, that we're not blowing it by having too few Archons, and two, that, um, we strike right as he's moving out. So one of these conditions is being met, but the second one, I just, I'm not even that sure that we're that safe from it. Perhaps if this was all started earlier, I think this is really good. Most of the time, people use Dark Templar to, to prevent this from moving out or to get in the way of this. But this sort of counterattack is, is pretty new. I don't really see this very much because it's still relying on a traditional... Lots of gateways, armor, charge, mixture. And then we also have the the dilemma that uh, Sting will face. Do I scan at the front or do I scan back home? Huck looks a little distracted. Very likely could have killed all that stuff off. But that's okay. He still killed a lot. Still killed 25 workers. So yeah, um, this is a nice uh, advantageous position that Huck finds himself in. It's going to be very hard to take a third, it's going to be very hard for the Protoss to be aggressive. The only real way um, we can lose is to a lot of aggressive dropping, so Blink is I think a natural choice. In fact, given that we've held the attack off, I think going Archons too quickly is incorrect. I think going Blink more quickly is correct. 
Nice snatch up. Guardian Shield's missing from that, but that's okay. Puck's in good position. And the ring around the Rosie with pylons. Okay, great. So in this position, um, it's essential to begin rounding out the tech. Uh, we, we've already had the, the basic Twilight stuff down, so we really either have to go Robo for Colossus or Templar Archive for Stormers. I would lean a little more towards the Templar Archives to begin uh, bolstering this with Archons. Because Archons are amazing if they don't have uh, EMP. They're just great, great units. And then, of course, the Colossus would be the next one to build. I don't even think that there is a need to get a lot of additional gateways right now. Uh, I think that you can settle with around 8 uh, and be generally fine for the defense. So Huck is... Huck, by the way, I'm, I'm just sort of surprised at this general preparedness. Not um, not because it's wrong, but because I think so few Protosses are adjusting for how annoying the medevacs are. And to have that awareness is pretty slick. So again, we have the DTs and we have the Edge, we would argue. So the only real thing we can lose to are these sorts of drops, which is why we were talking about Blink a little earlier on, and why it made oh so much sense. So now we're in a pretty typical type of position. So this is where I want to stop and try to say, would it be correct to place dudes here and begin trying to shove up in here as we were doing before? I actually do like this move of shoving here right now as opposed to trying to just flank up in this position. This is a tough angle to flank with uh, Zealot Archon, largely due to the fact that there is a whole building here that they can cut behind and SCVs that can be brought out and all sorts of annoyingness. However, if we're coming in from here, we have the potential to hit at a wide angle, the potential to cut off units in small numbers and still dart out, and we can still do this warp in tactic. And of course, we're still not having a good defense for our top left choice. I'm suddenly super keen on this path <laughs> for attack. So yep, rounding out the composition. Not with High Templar and Stormers, but instead with Colossers. And then Huck returns back to the sort of look that we had last time. Holding this watchtower aggressively. Poking on in this way. With a couple of sentries, force fields are a problem for the Terran. And of course the Blink Stalkers can always poke there. So I'm liking this. I'm loving it. Still don't see why these units are pulling up here. Oh, to kill off the rocks. Never mind, that's so clear. That makes so much sense. Going forward, making sure that the Watchtower is available, taking the top left expansion, getting the Colossus out two at a time. Yeah, 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 I like it. So in the last game, we saw some results of Sting pushing up through this way. And we saw the retreat was nice, it defended this expansion. And then I said, hey, in theory, if the dude decides to move right and up like this, there's no vulnerable expansion here, and we actually have two ledges that we can exploit. So there's that actually coming into action right there. This top left expansion is, is quite safe. Pulling up to this top side first, because if he does start heading left, we already have this watchtower, and we can begin repositioning our stuff up here and easily go take out this watchtower to get a good sense of where he is. Does Sting actually know about this base? Well, it looks like no. And some fairly straightforward EMPs and some fairly straightforward blasting action. Tragically leaves a lot of Hux Colossi quite vulnerable. And 
this is one of these moments where it's it's kind of easy to look at this and to think too much about the mid and late game. But I actually think that the losses happened a little earlier. Uh, or the reason behind the loss happened a little bit earlier. It doesn't change the fact that all the positioning was quite nice for Huck throughout, that this base was neatly tucked up here at the top side. So we'll actually pull back and check out a little bit about what could have possibly gone wrong. Taking them out. And then after another exchange, Huck is unable to hold and says GG. So I actually do want to come back to this moment. Actually, it probably happened around 9, was it? Yeah, these, these over-aggressive pushes feel very nice when they work, but they're, they're high variance. You kind of have to do a lot of damage. And I do think Sting could have been caught in a real grind. I'll note that right here, we don't really have a probe lead. And our Twilight Council is starting at 845. With that in mind, I want to come back to the six minute mark where we were getting this robo up. 845 is when it was down. These two things get started <clears throat> at six. Poking up here, dealing some considerable damage, sending in the Mothership Core, love all of these. Back home, before the seven minute mark, almost two minutes earlier, basically two minutes earlier, right now, there could have been a throwdown of some tech. I think the unit's lost tab will be very revealing in this position. Huck, even though he has more overall resources lost, is actually, I think, getting the, the advantage in this situation. Third Stalker, I think, is m more than enough. When this round of warp ins happened, right here, still no need for it. Could have thrown down. Chrono boosts on these Nexuses to get more probes out, to get that probe lead up. We lost a lot of stalkers here. This, in my eyes, was one of the big critical early game blows. Because then it, it, it's hard to deal with follow up stuffs. So, why did I bring up the fact that the Twilight Council was a full minute late? Because around the 10 minute mark, when this push was to occur, we have the Dark Templar that I actually think that Huck is, well, I mean, I think obviously he's behind. Just, hell, look at the supply tabby thingies. The unit lost the tabby thingies. This charge was not done when this attack arrived. This forge, how far away is it? A, a little over a minute, one minute with Chrono Boost. How far away is this? About one minute, especially if we use Chrono Boosts. All those upgrades would have been done right now. And this attack with these slow zealots would have been a lot better. We would have even had a plus one armor, which would have given us significant gains in this as opposed to just some gains. But we still do have the lead here. And I do think that the big drops that Sting did wound up being very effective. Because right here, I, if I were Protoss, I'd be like, alright, total defense mode. He doesn't have a third, he doesn't have a third, just defend. Shut things down, I love this blink choice, I love that. I'd probably get a second forge because I'm defending in a very easy spot to defend. And then the rounding out of the composition. I actually don't see a huge need to attack here. This move down here, I think, was a killer. I just don't I just don't see the big purpose in it. Because right now, 
we have the economic lead in theory, right? We should have more probes, and this guy should be behind on that. The only way, as we've said before, that we can really lose this is to some sort of big drop, and a big drop's really what kills us pretty hard here. Because we just lost have this thing will show us. So I think that the early game kind of fell behind a little bit. Then in this position, in the mid game, kind of fell behind again. Those are sort of my thoughts. Oh, I'll just stop now. Let's take some questions. Let's take questions. All right. Let's do it. Hmm. Pesu Kesu says, Wings of Liberty are Heart of the Swarm. Heart of the Swarm, easiest question ever. Oh, Prometheus says, Day 9, what about taking the upper left expansion in other matchups? Um... I think Zerg could do it against Terran. I think Zerg could do it against Protoss, and I think that those are the only two. I think that's fair enough to say. Um, yeah, it needs to be whatever race has the general map control. Uh, Terran versus Protoss tends to be one where there's a lot of debate over it, even if... Huck didn't have the map control. I still think that this top ridge is like a really nice one to sort of bounce around defense-wise because if Terran's teasing us with an attack here, we can easily just grab this watchtower. Like, very easily. And know if he's going to cut down for an attack like that. So, um, yeah, you really, really need map control. Uh, tomorrow on my day off, I'm playing Magic Gathering. Dun, dun. Shavek18 says, Day 9 watching pro games. I always see players get these insane upgrades by like the 15 minute mark. But when I play, I always feel like if I get upgrades, I won't have enough units. How does one proper, properly balance upgrades versus getting more units? Um, the complicated answer is that you should only get units if you clearly need them to hold off attack X. And notice how extremely different that is from saying you need units, or get units only if you think you need them. Because it's not about feelings, right? It's about what the attack is. Like, there is, like, uh, the, the, the uh, two barracks attack in Terran vs. Protoss. He's going to have five Marines and a Marauder at the front of my base at around 545, and I can't seem to hold it off. Like that. Those are the sorts of statements. So if you can name those things, it'll start to be clear. The more simple answer is don't get units unless you really clearly... Um, just avoid units at all costs, man. Get the upgrades. Get the buildings. Avoid making units. Um, and if you're feeling scared, tell yourself... I am just going to be an idiot this game and accept a loss. Just do that, man. Right? Just get some losses. Because, you know, I, I remember that this used to happen a lot um, for me in the Zerg vs. Terran matchup in Brood War in 2005. And I used to think to myself, oh, but he's going to get his units and he kills me. There's the attack that I always lose to him. Eh. And then I just made, like, no units this one game and just got all these upgrades. And then I started to realize, oh, he didn't attack me. Maybe I can get away with more. And I started to try to get away with a lot. I started to get, try to get away with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then I realized that most people aren't attacking, like, ever. People just don't really attack that much in this game. If you watch your games, notice that your opponent maybe scouts you once or twice... And then attacks you once or twice the whole game. It's so great. Like people never attack in this game, man. 
Let's see here. Seamaster Jr., what does he say? Day 9, wouldn't the Terran's drops have done more damage to Protoss' economy because he lost so much when he tried to defend it when Huck have counterattacked with minimal defense? Oh, crap, I don't understand the question. Terran's drops done more damage to Protoss' economy. I cannot parse the question. I, I do not understand what is being asked. Forgive me. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Prodigious says, Day 9, what are your thoughts on getting Storm quickly and playing in non-Colossus until late game? You're, you're going to have to get the Colossus eventually, but as long what's nice about Colossus is that you can get them faster than Storm. So the reason a lot of people go Colossus first is so they can deal with that 10-minute push, the Medivac dropping at the back and the Marine Marauder Medivac hitting at the front. Colossus is very nice for that. Storm will not be up in time. So what players tend to do is either go Colossus Defense or go um, Speed Zealot with uh, Archon and Shields Defense or Immortal Blink Defense um, with Sentries. With Sentries. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you can hold off the 10-minute push and you've gone Zealot Archon to defend it, really smooth transition. I think it's better at that point to transition into that. Last question. I think I said last question before. Oh, Seamaster J says, should Huck have countered with his army instead of pulling everything back to defend the drop? I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I first and foremost think that the attack probably should not have happened in the first place. Uh, this attack here is the one that Seamaster J is talking about. So what if Huck just went for it? He would have been up against... I mean, I think the best answer of all is just I don't think this attack really serves any purpose at this point. Um, is Huck still going for it? Yeah, I mean, defending this while counterattacking with some, uh, two zealots or something would have been just fine. But yeah, yeah, I think that would have been a, a, a large mistake too. Oh, these guys got stuck. That's actually probably part of the reason why this thing did so much damage. Yeah, 100% think that Huck is correct in pulling back here. That's what I think. I'm gonna go. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early 10 a.m. because I'm gonna be probably doing like three or four gate crash drafts in a row. Unless I lose really early, in which case it's gonna be six, seven, or eight. Ah, uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. See you next week for the King of the Beta.